Hi folks, Dan the Wolfman here, and a few years ago I made some videos on the rare Smith & Wesson Classic Mini 45 pistol, the CS45. Check out those videos, it was very popular, full range review, everything, the Smith & Wesson CS45, and then I had my carry pistols outdated in Weird 2.0, and also how to update a third gen Smith & Wesson pistol, really any pistol, for modern carrying needs, i.e. get a new recoil spring and new magazine springs and throw that in if you ever pick up a used pistol and are going to use it for carry. And then, you know, function test it, get those springs working out before you carry it, of course. Today, I have something even more rare. I have the opportunity to make videos and test this old Smith & Wesson 4513 TSW, but the rare Holy Grail six round non rail TSW 4513. Empty firearm magazines there are loaded. Not this one, those are, but empty firearm. So this one is very, very rare and rarely sought after. And I'll explain to you why in a second. This video is brought to you by Lone Mountain Ammunition. When I go to the range, I will be evaluating their ammunition. 185 grain and 230 grain. And this pistol is supposedly very, very accurate and is basically a performance center pistol before I believe the performance center at Smith & Wesson was founded. Meaning this one got all the hand fitting and polishing and that kind of thing and the accuracy showed, especially in these very early models. So brought to you by Lone Mountain Ammunition and also Don Hume. We'll be using these two Don Hume holsters made for this pistol, 4513, 4516, the middle three and three quarter inch barreled length pistols, and outside waistband jet slide stays very close to the body, which you may want for concealed carry at three o'clock, inside waistband, or I'll use an appendix. So check out Don Hume. I prefer leather holsters on nice old classic retro metal guns, uh, double action guns, and if it's a light striker, I want a full Kydex holster. So really it depends on that first trigger pull uh, to me. But if you got a nice pistol, show it off in a nice leather holster like Don Hume. Anyway, the Tactical Smith & Wesson, TSW, Tactical Smith & Wesson. There was actually three versions of it made, though you don't know. The originals were non-railed. Believe in 97, 98 for a two year period, this version, six round non rail, 97, about 99, somewhere in there. And the, the, the pistols overall, then with the rail, were made into about 2005, is probably when they actually f finished shipping out some of their law enforcement contracts. Uh, as far as I know, if you know different, let me know in the comments below. So 97 and 2005, 98, 2004, something around there. This is a six round version. Uh, these are different magazines than the extra lip that was added, added to the CS45. Uh, so be aware of that. There's some one-way compatibility, not both way for carry anyway. Uh, but it would also take a seven-round magazine in the later versions of this. Some made it out of the factory with a seven-round grip, no rail. And then a bolted-on rail, like most of the TSW series, bolted-on rail, um, and it was a seven-round version. Early versions, if you're looking at Smith & Wesson's guys, if this is... Uh, stainless looking color, shiny silver color, then it's an earlier version than later versions with the black mem parts on the safety decocker and the slide release, slide stop. Also, some of the cheaper Smith & Wessons later um, in like the 910 uh, series were made with plastic rears. You're going to want the metal if you can find it. And this version, like I said, before the performance center, everything's super, super tight. The TSW has full length rails. Good fit up and down, left to right. Very tight barrel fit there. Everything's very much in line like a custom 1911 would be. And apparently this would have very good accuracy. See, it's not going to fire her empty weapon because of the magazine disconnect. Put a magazine in. And there we go in the single action. Here's the nice, smooth double action. And then every subsequent round until you decock, that short, short reset on the single action. Let me show that one more time. That's why people love these. Very, very accurate. 
and then there's your decocker, and now it's got a dead trigger, and they're back on safe. That's traditional. Some law enforcements did have decock only. Uh, this is too early. Uh, the slide wasn't milled to be able to do that swap, I don't believe. Uh, but you could actually change some of the later ones to decock only, and a lot of law enforcement had decock only. Um, some magazine safety, some without. That's up to you. You could take out the magazine safety by going through, taking the spring out there. Um, but it has saved officers' lives and gun grabs by being able to depress that. And then if the bad guy got the weapon away, they got a dead trigger, even though a round was in the chamber. So... This, because of the aluminum frame, the last number of three being aluminum frame, a six would be steel. This is only 28 ounces. Now, uh, what's great about it, and I will not chamber it, what's great about this is you could carry this a plus one, and it's a 28 ounce, very thin, thin pistol. So easy to carry. Because it's long been hard to find a 45 that was thin and light and yet super reliable for carry. Three and three quarter inch, 3.75 inch barrel is gonna give you good hollow point expansion with a lot of hollow points versus three and a quarter like the CS45. And people didn't like a lot of people the fatter uh, rubber grip on the CS45. This is thinner, it doesn't bow out like the CS45. So this is actually more comfortable to me, though they're both great. And if you see one, pick one up, especially if you see a TSW, Pick one and pick it up. Uh, the prices are starting to go insane. Very, very, very great pistol. And now a lot of law enforcement officers found that, wow, now they can carry 45. A lot of the LA and, and uh, LAPD were carrying the 4506. They wanted this for off-duty carry. And again, you could carry six or seven in the gun or eight in the gun and eight round backups. Now that's awfully nice to do. Same gear. Nice holsters. It's all out there, guys. So, very, 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 very nice. It's supposedly very accurate. We'll be testing, again, this Lone Mountain ammunition, maybe some other ammunition to make sure and see how accurate it is, especially, I'm not a group shooter, but especially in that nice single-action pull. The full-length guide rails makes it very, very accurate in all the forums that I've read about this. This was basically hand-fitted, if I didn't say, before the Performance Center started, this was basically hand-fitted. I believe MSRP was like 920 bucks. Okay, that's pretty expensive back in 1997, 98. You know, and look at the inflation we have today. Anyway, keep your freedom while you can. So, I think I'm gonna be impressed. I love the CS45, um, the, the shorter, chunkier version. Look at my videos on that. When we head to the range, we'll be trying it out. I'll probably do most from appendix, but maybe a little bit from outside waistband, if I remember to. Uh, both these rounds and maybe some other 185, maybe some other 230, maybe some hollow points, maybe some HSTs. Uh, this barrel length, I would suggest either HSTs or 185 plus P Golden Saber would probably be my bets. I know they'll expand. Some other hollow points will probably give you a moderate 45 expansion from three and three quarter. Uh, but this is better than, you know, than a lot of the shorter barrel lengths in that regard. So, peep, this is the most sought after version. So, especially if you found a non-railed, whether it's a six or seven round uh, capacity grip frame. But a lot, it's really the six is very coveted uh, that guys wanted to have that concealability. Me, I'm a big guy, so I'll be throwing an eight-rounder because I like at least nine rounds in a gun. Three to three bad guys, if need be, to drive them off. That's what I feel based on all the stats that I know in post places and people don't pay attention to all the stats I've compiled. But anyway, guys, I look forward to this. Let me know what you think. Do you have an experience with a Smith & Wesson second or third gen auto? Wouldn't it be great if they could make them again, have this kind of quality again? Um... Something like this would cost so much now. It would be a performance center model. This basically was. And yet people don't know it. So uh, even I even thought about getting in a 40 again after 20 plus years and getting a 4013 TSW. I let a couple slip through my fingers. I shouldn't have. You might want to pick one of those up. And uh, But let me know if you have any experience. Let me know if you have one. Uh, let me know if you've shot one. Get down there in the comments, 940, 45. Which one would you pick up and why? Especially if it's a single stack. And if you want to learn about real ballistics and not just hearsay, look at my 9mm versus 45 uh, four-part series. 
and stuff like that, guys. Please get down there. The thumbs up, thumbs up and like. Fight the algorithm that fights freedom. And uh, I will catch you on the flip side. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Cub.